and welcome to NOAA News. Today is Friday, September 3rd, and I'm your host, Kristen McDonald. It is great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. Months after former Fire Chief George Maurice announced his retirement at a selectman's meeting, the newest chief of the Norwood Fire Department has been selected. For more on this, we go to Norwood News reporter Aaron Crowley. In early July, the chief of the Norwood Fire Department, George Maurice, announced his retirement at a Board of Selectmen meeting. Since then, the town has been working to hire a new chief. Longtime member of the Norwood Fire Department, Dave Hayes, was announced chief earlier this week. Chief Hayes is thrilled about the new position. I uh, started my fire service career in the military uh, in 1976. Worked for the Air Force for nine years, the Navy for two years as a civilian firefighter. Uh, went to Marshfield Fire Department. Worked there for five years, made it to the rank of lieutenant, got laid off in 1991. Um, the end of 91 was a big budget crunch and things happened. So I was, went through a few months of uh, unemployment. Norwood called me. I came here. I started working here. It was a wonderful town, wonderful fire department. I stayed here as a firefighter until 2010. Uh, made lieutenant provisionally. Did some acting time. Then I made lieutenant permanently in 2011. Uh, made deputy chief here in 2020, January 2020, just in time for COVID and some other things that were crazy. Of course, I was elated when, when uh, Tony gave me the news. Uh, initially, I wanted to tell everybody in the world, I wanted to tell my mom, who's recently passed. Didn't get the opportunity, but I'm sure she knows. Um, and then... Uh, Shortly after the elation, the first day or two, I was it was great. After that, I, I started getting humbled, wondering what I didn't know, what my failings might be. Um, I'm not, um, I don't lack confidence at all, but these are things you start to worry about. Um, when you realize that you're the guy that has to do, you have to make the final decisions, the hard decisions. Um, anybody that gets hurt in this fire department is my responsibility, and I know that. I uh, make that a hallmark. The safety of the guys is the most important thing. Uh, but it's humbling. It's very humbling to realize that now I have to do, I have to take care of these guys, make sure they have the equipment, the training, the things it takes to do it right. Chief Hayes is looking forward to the future of the department. One of the things I'm focusing on now, Chief Maurice started it. Uh, we want a second ALS ambulance. We run Right now we run one ALS, one BLS. Uh, that's okay, but I don't want to be okay. I want to be better. I want to give the people of the town better service, uh, and that means giving the firefighters the tools they need to do it. There's some discussions going on back and forth, and I expect to have this up and running, I hope, soon. Um, it's kind of, some of it's out of my hands, but uh, the other aspect we're developing or working on is developing our people. I, I intend to push down on my officers and, and by pushing down, pull them up. I want them more involved in planning, directing. Um, and I'm talking events like Norwood Day, uh, Fire Prevention Week. Um, traditionally, the chief here has done a, a lot of the planning and he just lays the plan out to the men. I think it's better for the people if they get involved in the planning. I'll give them the resources. I'll point them in the direction and if I see a flaw in their plan, I'll, I'll address that. But largely, I want those guys to develop because when I leave here in five or seven years, whatever it happens to be, I want them to not miss a beat. I don't want them to miss Dave Hayes. I want them to step up. The next guy moves into the office, whoever that happens to be, and the officers are all ready to go. And that's, those are the visions I have for the fire department. Congratulations, Chief Hayes. On behalf of everyone at Norwood Community Media, we look forward to working closely with the fire department. For NCM, I'm Erin Crowley. Thanks, Erin, and congrats to Chief Hayes. Next Wednesday, the Norwood Public Schools are set to open for the 2021-22 school year. The administration has been working hard over the summer to prepare for the year. Yeah, so this summer was a little bit more difficult um, in some ways than last summer. Last summer was difficult in that we were totally redesigning. Uh, this summer was difficult in that the original guidance that was coming from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DESE, 
um, has changed drastically. Uh, back end of May, beginning of June, they were saying we won't need a distance, we won't need to wear masks, and that's kind of how we went into um, the summer, late July, beginning of August, all of that has changed with the uh, Delta variant becoming prevalent um, and the research coming out on the Delta variant uh, that has changed. So we've gone from there to um, basically trying to adopt the CDC guidelines of remaining three feet apart. Um, we have, we had already purchased air scrubbers and plan to uh, use the air scrubbers, but now we have, are going to be purchasing, they should be arriving the end of this week, um, air purifiers for our cafeterias uh, and changing that a little bit and we're going to try to stagger feet, seats and be three feet apart, minimize time without masks to basically when kids are sitting and eating and as soon as they are done transition as quick as possible to an outside recess time. Um, Again, and you know, the school department, the school committee rather, uh, passed or re-implemented our mask mandate from last year. The, the, the commissioner has um, now in instituted a statewide mandate for mask wearing. Um, that is different than our local policy. He is talking about trying to get 80% of uh, all staff and students vaccinated by October 1st for that to change. Dr. Thompson is hopeful that this year will look a little more normal for staff and students. Uh, it is going to look more like normal than last year. You still will see some traffic patterns. You still will see sanitation uh, stations. You will still have regular hand washing being reinforced. You will have mass breaks like you did last year. Um, you will see kids in masks like you did last year. Uh, but you will see full school days. Uh, one of the big differences, you won't see masks outside. There's not a requirement to wear masks outside. Um, but inside, uh, we are going to need to wear masks and try to stay at least three feet away from each other. Again this school year, the Nord Public Schools will partake in the school-funded pool testing. Uh, the state is funding pool testing, which we did do last spring as well, uh, where weekly uh, there will be a sample collected and the, hopefully we're planning on using the same system we did last year with the saliva test, the Veritas test. We bring in a saliva sample and drop it off and it's tested once a week. We are going to encourage and ask uh, all families to consider partaking in that, whether they are vaccinated or not. Um, we are seeing breakthrough, although mostly mild, thank God, cases uh, with the Delta variant, but that will be an extra screening tool. Um, we will have, and then there is a statewide test and stay program. Some of those particulars are still being worked out, uh, but if you're exposed in school, um, you would have the option, and if you're asymptomatic, you would have the option of taking a test if you're negative attending school. Hopefully that will reduce the number of kids sitting uh, at home while quarantining. Um, so those are a couple other things that are in the works. Good luck to all the teachers and students on a successful and safe school year. Stay tuned after this break for an update from the library and a recap of a recent fundraiser. Hi, I'm Chief Bill Brooks of the Norwood Police Department. The men and women of the Norwood PD are committed to protecting you and to providing you with top quality service. We're busy. Norwood is a nice town, but in any given 24-hour cycle, we handle anywhere from 65 to 90 radio calls and officer-initiated events. We patrol the town's 10 square miles, including over 100 miles of roadways. Our traffic enforcement focuses on places where crashes have occurred, neighborhoods where residents have reported chronic violations and offenses that impact crashes like speed, texting, running stop signs and red lights, and failing to yield to pedestrians. When we're not tied up on calls, we work hard to build relationships with members of the community. So you'll see our officers out walking footbeats, checking in with merchants, and stopping at sporting events to chat with kids. We believe that every resident should know, or at least feel like they know, a member of our department. So if you see us, stop and say hello. We'd love to chat with you. On behalf of the men and women of the Norwood Police Department, it's our pleasure to serve you. Welcome back. 
Last weekend was the first annual Ron Marshall C. Wiffle Ball Tournament to form a scholarship in his name to be awarded to a student pursuing the trades. The weather was great and the turnout was even better. It is the very first, the first annual uh, Ron Marshall C. Scholarship uh, Wiffle Ball Tournament. It is for, it is a uh, scholarship in my father's name for a um, Norwood High School graduate going into the trades. A thousand dollar scholarship for a kid going into the trades and we have an amazing turnout for um, what I didn't think was going to be more than 15 teams ended up being almost 30 and uh, on almost complete tournament and filled bracket. So I tried to make it as fair as possible, but I think I think it's turning out really well for being um, the first one and no real idea how we were going to do it until we did it. I uh, we had people sign up um, via email, sending their team name and team members via email, and then a hundred dollars for. Uh, the team through Venmo to Ron Marshall C. Scholarship. I was trying to make the brackets as even as possible with knowing very little about each team and I only knew some people on each team so I tried to make them as even as possible in the first round. As the games go on the fairness might get more fair might or might, might get more might get less but um, I think it's turning out really well for being um, the first one and no real idea how we were gonna do it until we did it. And I think it's important for people to go into the trades because Call, uh, high schools and all public school around the world, or around, at least around this country, pushes college like it's the be-all, end-all of success, and it's not. There's so many successful people who don't go to college, there's so many successful people who are in the trades, and, you know, they're making more money and they're not in debt. So, you know, so that's, that's what's important about it, is making sure people not only recognize that this is a scholarship for the trades, but that the trades is a place to go. It's not just college. The Norwood Scholarship Foundation of Norwood High School initially denied um, the thousand dollars to go to a trades per a kid going into the trades. They wanted it going to someone going to college, and so um, after the denial from the Scholarship Foundation of Norwood High School, my mother just decided to still make one, and because that's who she is, and she did an amazing job. And she, she's um, you know, we have about maybe six, seven years of money worth already and this is just the first event that we've ever held. We, we have pl other plans to incorporate more scholarships so it's like specifically a plumbing scholarship, specifically an ele electrician scholarship, specifically HVAC, carpentry and, and we're trying to get other companies to have you know either donate tool bags or donate their own a thousand dollars to have their own scholarship under an umbrella which my mom and I are trying to um, a scholarship umbrella that my, mo my mother and I are trying to figure out. Keep on the lookout for next year's. We'll try to make it bigger and better as much as we can. And don't discourage the trades. <laughs> College is not the be all end all of success. Looks like it was a great time. Cannot wait for next year. Lots of authors are stopping by the library in September. Here's Library Director Clayton Cheever with this month's Moral Moment. Greetings from the Moral Memorial Library, Norwood's public library for everyone. I'm Clayton Cheever, your Library Director, and I'd like to tell you about a few things happening here at the library this September. Have you seen us out and about town recently? We've been showing up on the Common before concerts, at schools, and at the Bond Street Tot Lot and we're continuing our outdoor programs this month, I encourage you to check out our calendar at norwoodlibrary.org slash moral calendar to get all the latest details. On Monday mornings, beginning September 13th, our children's librarians are presenting outdoor art play at the Carroll Poirier Village Center at 82 Roosevelt Ave, starting at 1030. This art program for preschoolers is being presented in collaboration with Norwood Public Schools Coordinated Family and Community Engagement. Our adult librarians are excited about some great author talks we're hosting this month. Sam Farmer will be talking about his book, A Long Walk Down a Winding Road, on Tuesday evening, September 14th, starting at 7. Mr. Farmer writes from the unique perspective of someone living on the autism spectrum. This book speaks to all of us who want to carve out better lives for ourselves. He shares clear advice and simple steps for overcoming adversity and improving quality of life, interwoven with real stories of his personal triumphs. 
I'm really excited to announce that we're hosting a conversation between acclaimed thriller writer Hank Philippi Ryan and the world's best-selling author James Patterson on Thursday evening, September 23rd, starting at 7. Both of these literary stars have new books coming out this fall, and this promises to be an amazing evening. Now, both the Mr. Farmer's presentation and the conversation between James Patterson and Hank Philippi Ryan will be taking place on Zoom and registrations required. So visit our website to get all the links and more details. National Hispanic American Heritage Month is September 15th through October 15th, and we have a couple of great suggestions for ways to honor it. If you'd like to improve your Spanish language skills, or if you speak Spanish and you'd like to study English or other languages, we have a great online tool to help you. It's called Mango Languages, and you can find it, uh, or a link to it, on our online resources page, which we call Databases. In addition to rich tools to help English speakers develop conversational skills in a large number of non-English languages, Mango also features ESL instruction tailored for speakers of more than a dozen languages. Every month, I like to highlight a couple of the newest books in our collection. One of the books I'm happy to tell you about this month is also a great fit for Hispanic American Heritage Month. Mexican Gothic is a novel written by Silvia Morena Garcia that celebrates the month and will also help get you in the mood for the Halloween season. In it, you'll find a lyrical blend of classic horror tropes, including a haunted house, gothic atmosphere, and family secrets set in the mid-century Mexican countryside. The other book for adults that I want to tell you about was written by David Pogue, who you may know for his work writing for the New York Times, his science specials on PBS's Nova, and his tenure as science correspondent on CBS Sunday Morning. This new book, just published and added to our collection this August, is titled How to Prepare for Climate Change, A Practical Guide to Surviving the Chaos. We're hosting a discussion of this book with the author online on Friday afternoon, September 24th at 2 as part of a week-long series of programs for Climate Prep Week. You can attend this program online or come to the library for a live stream presented in our Simone room. To round out our moment here together, I have two more books that I'd like to recommend for younger readers. Your Name is a Song is a picture book by Jamila Tompkin Bigelow, illustrated by Louisa Uribe. It's a beautiful book with a great story for everyone going back to school and it deals with and everyone dealing with kids and teachers who can't or won't pronounce people's names correctly. Teens and everyone who likes reading books starring high school seniors should check out Six Angry Girls by Adrian Kistner. This is a fictional, riotous story of six girls who team together to create a mock trial team like no other, get involved in knitting activism and their efforts to smash the patriarchy in the process. This has been a moral moment. From everyone here at the library, I wish you and yours a safe and happy September. Thanks, Clayton. For more information, visit the Moral Library website. In school news, last week, Norwood High School held their freshman orientation program. Let's hear from principal Dr. Hugh Galligan and learn how they welcomed the class of 2025. On August 26th, Norwood High School was fortunate enough to host an in-person new student orientation. So this was for any freshman student, grade nine student entering the high school, as well as any student who recently transferred to Norwood High School and will be starting this year. We weren't able to host this event in person last year, so we were really excited to see and feel that energy. Every student had the uh, ability to meet in small groups with an administrator, a school counselor, and to work with our Mustang mentors, who are our peer leaders and grades uh, as seniors, uh, to be able to receive a school tour and see all that the high school has to offer, as well as go over their individual uh, class schedules, uh, open their locker, answer all those kind of what do I do on the first day of school questions. Most importantly, we were able to get a feel for uh, our mission, our values, and the portrait of Nora graduate here, kind of the expectations and the culture we have here at the high school. Welcome all our students and let them feel the sense of care that we have. Uh, after that, we were able to meet on the front lawn and have a giant pizza party hosted by uh, the Norwood uh, High School PTO. And beverages were donated by Polar Seltzer. And we were super excited to all be able to gather in that way. During that time, students were also able to visit with clubs and activities and athletics uh, to be able to find out information so that they can get involved at the high school beyond just their academic uh, offerings. 
It was a wonderful day, and we look forward to welcoming all our new students on the first day on September 8th. Now we're going to toss it over to Mike Maloof with sports. Hello everyone and welcome to the Sports Update, I'm Mike Maloof. We have a few scores to announce this week as the golf team officially kicked off the fall regular season. Tuesday, the boys and girls of the golf team took on Westwood at the comforts of their home course, Nord Country Club. Westwood showed that they are still the top dog in the Tri-Valley League, defeating the Mustangs 259-236. to On Tuesday, the Mustangs looked to bounce back against their old base state foe, Weymouth. It was a much better day as Nord shot 19 strokes better, defeating Weymouth 240 to 275. The rest of the fall team start up their action next week and we'll have a full slate of games to report. Also some exciting news for the young runners in town. The school committee voted Wednesday night to start a middle school cross country team. I was able to catch up with athletic director John Longley to explain more. Yeah, we're really uh, excited about that. Uh, a few years ago, we had a, a subcommittee that looked at the athletic program, and, and one of the main uh, recommendations moving forward long term was to look at middle school interscholastic programming. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the schools in the area and in the Tri-Valley League have some middle school um, programming, so we wanted to try and identify some of the sports that maybe that, that it's not a youth program in the town already supporting that program and start to implement those. So cross country was a natural. There's currently not a, not a youth cross country program in Norwood. Uh, there is a youth uh, middle school um, league as part of the Tri-Valley League. And so it just was a natural that that would be the one that we kind of start with. And then we'll look at it, you know, in the future as to what some other options might be for other sports. Um, so we're really excited about it. Right now it's for grades six through eight, boys and girls. We're still kind of, you know, there's kind of a rush to get this all kind of cleaned up and ready to go, but we're excited the school committee approved it. Now like a, the posting for a coach has to happen. We have to do registration. Uh, the way that middle school programming works is typically the schools don't start practice till when their school actually starts, when students are in session. So we're not behind as far as that's concerned, but um, we're, we're looking forward to it. And we hope as many kids will come out and it's the start of um, you know, some maybe additional programming at uh, Coakley. Thanks, John. Well, that's all for the sports update. Make sure to follow us on social media for updates on our live sports coverage. Kristen, back to you. Thanks, Mike. In Government Monday night, the Planning Board met virtually and most of the meeting was centered around the redevelopment discussion of 83 Moore Street or the Space Center. Representatives from the Space Center presented to the Board their plans for the redevelopment of another building at the Moore Street location. These are the conditions that you see. Um, they're, they're vacant buildings, um, they're along the riverfront. Um, and we, we see it as a, a real opportunity to, uh, to get in and, and clean, up, clean up the area, clean up the blighted buildings, um, restore the riverfront uh, and make it accessible, and, uh, and then create another element, as they said, another element of this project that would be uh, productive um, for the project. So Rob, if you want to get to the next one. So, so this last phase, as I said, will is going to is going to complete the project and, and clean things up. We are envisioning that this would be a primarily residential with commercial, so a mixed use a mixed use project that would be um, uh, that would be uh, we think um, very synergistic with the rest of the project that we have now. There's a there's a, a real trend in the industry toward mixed use. Mixing residents, residents with with offices and with entertainment uses. So, you know, to give to give a little idea of what we have in mind on the residential side, we are thinking about apartments. Um, often, when communities think about apartments, they have a certain image in their mind of, of projects that maybe are you know not high quality or that they you know they 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 they're a little bit concerned about that. I wanted to give a couple of examples of the pro some projects that we've done recently that we are would, would be modeling this project after. Uh, the one that we're looking at right now is a project called Orpheum. It's in Dover, New Hampshire. It's about 130 units. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 100, 130 units. Um, and it's a combination, what we're looking at is a combination of on the, on the upper floors, 
our apartments and on the ground floor is a combination of co-work space um restaurant space and lobby and it's all it's all um uh designed to interact as one space uh and it's just, it's a great community space following the presentation the group fielded questions from the board then the board scheduled a site visit for the location on Moore Street to view the building and area that is being considered for renovation. To end the meeting, the board discussed future meetings and if they would be held in person or virtually. The next meeting for the planning board will be on September 20th. The Board of Selectmen met Tuesday evening for the last summer session. Starting September 7th, the board will be back to meeting weekly. Representatives from Moderna appeared before the board to discuss an application for a VIF license. The license was approved. Later, the board announced that Fall Town Meeting will reconvene on Monday, October 18th. Before adjournment, Town Manager Tony Mazzucco presented a letter of commendation to the board from Police Chief Brooks. The letter details outstanding work from Officer Mazzola and Officer Hoyle regarding an armed incident in August. From Chief Brooks, I hereby commend Officer Jamie Mazzola and Officer Jennifer Hoyle for their remarkable restraint and professionalism during an armed encounter on August 16th. The officers responded to a call for the purpose of keeping the peace while the calling party removed personal property from their father's home. Upon arrival, officers encountered the man's father, who was clearly intoxicated. Within a short time, the father stepped into another room and reappeared carrying a handgun. The officers drew their firearms and issued verbal commands for their father to drop the gun. Despite the officers' commands, the father swung the firearm around him, hiding it from the officer's view. A moment later, he swung back around, brandishing the gun several times in a back-and-forth motion. Towards the officers, the officers used remarkable restraint by not firing at the subject. Instead, they used verbal commands to convince him to put the firearm down. Eventually, the subject lowered the firearm and a family member was able to retrieve it from him. Situations like this one can easily end with a shooting. The fact that it is not is a credit to the training, professionalism, and good judgment of officers Mazzola and Hoyle, as well as Chief Brooks and his whole team. They are hereby commended for their exemplary service. William G. Brooks, Chief of Police. Thanks to the Newark Police Department for keeping us all safe. The Board of Selectmen meets again on September 7th. The school committee met remotely Wednesday night. Health Director Sagal Reese provided an update on the town's vaccination rate. Superintendent David Thompson provided an update on the COVID-19 procedures for the upcoming school year. There are other ones that are uh, just came out yesterday from the DSE, which I think I'll share in a little bit. Um, but COVID-19 situation chart, so a student identified as symptomatic, meaning that, that they have um, COVID symptoms. Uh, students assessed by the nurse and placed in a medical waiting room until they can go home. Uh, they cannot go home on a bus. Someone has to come and get them. The student will get a PCR or molecular COVID-19 test. If they're positive, uh, self-isolation for at least 10 days and, uh, and until 24 hours after uh, they pass without fever or other symptoms. Uh, if That's if they're positive or if they do not test. Uh, if they test as negative, they can return after 24 hours have passed without symptoms uh, and are free of fever, um, and that you, you can't take Tylenol and say you're free of a fever, okay? Um, so if an individual is symptomatic with COVID-19 at home, they should stay at home. Don't come to school. Stay at home and, and call your health care provider. Get tested, and but still please contact the school nurse. School nurse leader Jill Driscoll provides an update on COVID-19 testing policies. The opportunity for the test and stay and um, the pool testing information was just um, released about two weeks ago. And I've been working very hard to quickly get this in place for the beginning of the school year. If people can just keep an eye on the web page um, as soon as things are in place, I will make sure it's posted there so um, staff and students and families can understand uh, how to sign up for all those options. Um, the program that we ran through the spring and the summer ended on August 31st. For additional questions about the COVID-19 policy, please contact the nurse at your school. Later, the committee voted to continue remote meetings indefinitely. Before adjournment, the committee approved the request to establish a cross-country team at the middle school. The school committee meets again next week. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch on demand at nordcommunitymedia.org. Stay tuned after this break for more town news. Norwood. 
Here, we are chosen at birth. Our loyalties are predetermined. And our families, defined. Raised by the stories of those that came before us. Here's a breakaway, Bill Norman, he's in back, it's cool! Fearlessly driven by the hope of what's to come. It chooses us, it defines us. And for us, it's everything. This is Norwood. And here, sports are in our blood. Norwood Mustangs 2015 are the state Division I champs. Welcome back. The Senior Center held the last supper of the summer on Tuesday. A large crowd gathered for delicious food and ice cream from the Cookie Monster. Thanks to officers from the Nord Police Department for helping to serve dinner. The MVP of the evening was Senior Center Director Carrie McCarthy. Dinner started with a toast to Carrie for all of her hard work and then NCM surprised Carrie with a video. Thanks so much for all you do, Carrie. You always go above and beyond and Nord seniors are so lucky to have you. On Monday, Massachusetts FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Task Force 1 set off to Louisiana to support in the recovery efforts after Hurricane Ida. Among the 80-member deployment was NORD firefighter and paramedic Mike Chisholm, who is a medical specialist on the team. It is anticipated that they will be working on the ground for multiple weeks with other agencies from around the country until rescue efforts are complete. Thank you for your efforts, Firefighter Chisholm and the whole crew of Task Force 1. Well, that's all for Nord News. To stay up to date with Nord Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.